Octopuses, some of the most confusing and unusually shaped animals in the animal kingdom. How do they breathe? How do they move around? Most importantly, how do they poop? Well, today I'm at the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology, and I've gathered a consortium of octopuses, a variety of octopus specimens for us to take a look at and answer these questions. Let's take a close look and go over the jars that we have to open today. This is a nice kind of medium-sized octopus in a regular jar. We're also going to crack open this jar, which has a bunch of teeny tiny octopuses in it, which is kind of neat. This one is one of my personal favorites. It's so chock full. How many octopus do you think are inside this jar? This is a question that I've been wondering for the past four months, and I think I'm finally going to answer it today. So there's some big juicers at the top, but as you move towards the bottom, they're all kind of jumbled in there together. How many do you think? My guess is 12. So let me know if you get it right. We also have a squid specimen right here, which uh, we're gonna crack open into later. It's gonna help us learn a little bit more about octopus anatomy. But first things first, you guys might find this surprising. I wanna talk about this specimen right here. It's teeny tiny, but it's the prettiest octopus in the entire collection. So let's crack this open and get a better look. Pop open the jar. We kind of flip this cap over on top. The top is this little glass cylinder right here. We're gonna set it to the side and take our tweezers to pull out the little octopus. Which one do we want? I'll turn it around so you guys can see it better. Yeah, that's a good one. It's so small. Set it to the side, here we are. Look at this, it's so tiny. Let's zoom in and go over some super basic anatomy. Here, you got the eyes. Eyeball, eyeball. This is like the front of the octopus. This bulbous back section right here is called the mantle. It's where most of the important internal organs are. And if you flip it over, we have eight little arms. Here's my question though. How does an octopus move around using its arms? I thought they used them like this, where they kind of opened them out and then pushed the water away to kind of shoot themselves through the water. But of course, I was wrong. To learn about how octopus actually move around, we're gonna put this tiny guy away, see you later, and pull out a different specimen. I think we need one of the big boys in this big one. So a question I get in a lot of the fluid specimen videos that I post is one, what do you store the specimens in? And two, why is the liquid so brown and yellow? Well, all the specimens are stored in ethanol. Um, and ethanol is typically clear. But over time, because these specimens are so old and can be like 100 years old, uh, enzymes and fat and little things from inside the specimen start leaching out into the ethanol that it's stored in, causing it to turn kind of this yellowish pea brown color, which is entirely unappetizing, but you know, that's the truth. So that's the answer to your question. We're gonna cap this, put it to the side. We have two specimens around here that are gonna help us answer the question, how do octopus move? First, we're gonna start with this one. Here are the arms of the octopus. You can see that there are eight arms surrounding this tiny hole right here. If I tilt this forward, you can see that their eyes are right here at the front. So this is kind of like the octopus is staring right at you. So we refer to the arms in pairs. So this right here is the first pair of arms. And then back, you have the second pair of arms, third pair of arms, and fourth pair of arms right here. So how do octopus move? Typically, octopus move around the bottom of the ocean by using their back two arms almost as like little legs to push themselves along the bottom, while the rest of their arms are gathering food from all over the place. But this doesn't answer the question, what's going on when you see an octopus zooming through the water? Check out this specimen right here. This is an absolute juicer. And we gotta look at some uh, particular anatomy where we're gonna have to zoom in because it's really tiny to check out right in the back. Oh, perfect, we're gonna get a great shot at it. Okay, so do you see that little tube right there? That tube is called a siphon or funnel. And then do you see that little slit above the tube? That slit is called the aperture. It's an opening to the mantle. Octopus are able to suck water in through that slit into their mantle and then shoot it out of that siphon so it acts almost like a little jet that can propel them whoosh, through the water. So when you see an octopus moving, it's not pushing the water necessarily with its arms. Whoosh. Instead, it's sucked up a bunch of water and shooting it whoosh, out of that little tube, the siphon right there, to shoot itself through the water. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. 
The cool thing about this is that siphon isn't just used for moving around, but it's also used for breathing, which is kind of uh, pretty wild. How do octopus breathe? Engage diagram. Here we have a diagram of the internal anatomy of the octopus. This is the funnel or the siphon that we were just looking at right here. The aperture isn't shown on this diagram, but I think it's this little slit right here. So to move around, they suck water into the mantle and then shoot it out of the funnel. If you're an astute observer, you might also see this right here inside the mantle. They have gills, just like fish. So when they suck in water to move around, the water passes over the gills, which absorb oxygen in that water and allow them to breathe. For people who know a lot about octopus and are really kind of like snooty about their octopus knowledge, there are some studies that say that um, some octopus can passively absorb oxygen through their skin. So octopus have gills, kind of like fish, but they can also breathe through their skin as well. When I was researching though, it's crazy how important this siphon or this funnel is to the entire biology of octopuses. Here's another question, how do octopus poop? I'm sure you probably know that all of the arms surround this little hole, and inside that hole is a beak that the octopus uses to kind of munch, munch, munch on their food. But if you look around the rest of the octopus, where does it go? Where is the octopus butthole? Where is it? Engage diagram. The astute observer may have noticed that inside the eternal anatomy of the octopus is many things, including this called a buccal mass. This in layman's terms is basically the thing that holds onto their mouth right there. So here's the journey, the journey of food through an octopus. First, they chomp, chomp, chomp it. It goes through their buccal mass and down this area right here into their crop. Yeah, octopus have a, octopuses have a crop, which I was surprised to hear, kind of like birds. Continues to travel down their digestive system, passes through these tubes right here to this little hole, which psh, is their uh, anus. Terrific, we found it. We have found the anus. After food passes through the anus, it ends up in this area, which is just the mantle, and eventually it's expelled again through the funnel, that tube that we were looking at earlier. Everything happens through the funnel on an octopus, and when I say everything, I'm exaggerating because that's not true. This little funnel tube is used for locomotion, and uh, they also poop out of it. Now, you may have noticed that when I talk about the appendages of octopus, I'm using the word arms instead of tentacles. Get ready to have your mind flipping rocked. Octopus don't have tentacles. They have arms. Charlie, you say, that makes no sense. Well, uh, to help me explain, I'm going to use this one right here. Let's crack this bad boy open. Ah, nice. These look terrific. These ones are so nice. Take an extremely close look at the entire length of the arms of this miniature octopus. Notice how there are suckers down the length of the entire arm, especially so at the base right here. Remember what this looks like. You got suckers even at the base of the appendages right here. We're gonna compare this to the appendages on this squid. Crack it open. This thing looks so good, it's so nice. Yo, there's, the, there's a squid siphon, just like the octopus. They got one too. But we're interested in the appendages, so look right here. At first glance, things look very similar to octopuses, right? We have a bunch of long appendages with suckers that go all the way to the base. But squid also have two extra appendages right here, and those look a little bit different. If we look right here, they have suckers on the tip, but not on the rest of the arm. Anatomically speaking, this is a tentacle. The rest of these are arms. Technically speaking, squid have two tentacles and octopus have none. They have eight arms. They're called arms, not tentacles. Because arms have suckers that run the entire length of the appendage. The only exception to that rule being on male octopuses. To help me explain, it's time to break out the big boy. Crack it open, flip it over. Ah, okay, here we go. Woo, yo, ooh, man, what a pretty boy, oh my gosh. How do I know it's a boy? I'll show you. All octopus kind of look the same. There are no extremely obvious defining characteristics to help us know if this is a male or female, unless you know where to look. We're looking specifically at the very, very tip of all of these arms. I'm gonna zoom in so we can see them a little better. Most of the arms kind of look like this, and you can see that they have suckers that go all the way to the very tip. If every arm on an octopus looks like this, and it has suckers that go all the way to the tip, that octopus is a female. 
But here's something that's a little bit different. Take a look at the tip of this arm. Ooh, nice. So this one ends in a little scoop, unlike that other one. If one of the arms on an octopus ends in a scoop like this, that octopus is a male. Female octopus don't have the scoop. Male octopus have one arm with a scoop. That's how you tell the difference. There's one more thing we have to do before we go. It's time to get a final count on the number of octopuses in this jar right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen. Hey, did you get it? Let me know. And what do you want to see next? Thanks for watching. Bye. Specimen use made possible by the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology.